Good morning, Uplift. Hope everybody's all right this morning. Uh, we've all heard PJ talk about being dragged to church every Sunday when he was young. Drugged. Yeah, drugged. <laughs> uh, well, I was done the same way. Even up after I turned 18, before I left home, I was done it. My mom would not let me go fishing with my friends. Uh just to go bike riding or anything. Uh, I, I'm glad she did. And uh, I know during the worship, during the preaching service, I would sit and I would pay attention to what the preacher was preaching about. And uh, while he was doing that, sometimes I'd get lost and I'd follow in my Bible exactly where he was taking the message from. And sometimes I get carried away and just keep reading and lose thought on what he was saying. But it, it intrigued me just to see what was next in that, after that. And, uh, but I, I left home and I was 18 years old and I can count the number uh, probably 10 times I'd been in church for the next 38 years. And uh, during all that time, I had job changes, became very depressed, uh, just didn't feel like doing anything. Uh, I even attempted suicide, and the Lord pulled me out of that, and uh, he told me, he said, I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you yet. So, and during, after the attempt, I just sat down and cried. I just bawled my eyes out. And, but, and I prayed to him that I would find somebody who would be with me, do things with me, and just live my life with me. And a little bit later on, I met my wife. And she's been a saving grace for me. And uh, one thing she asked of me was to be able to go to church with her. And I come here with her the first time, and I was hooked. This church, I fell in love with this place. And the people here just, I mean, it just filled my heart with love, friendship, and kindness. And just become so close to the Lord now over all this. And the first time PJ shook my hand I just felt something go up my arm it was like a love and kindness and friendship I'll never forget that and uh, eventually he married us right here on this same stage <laughs> and uh, me and Lana both were uh, crying and I think PJ I think he kind of got emotional in the process too <laughs> But uh, ever since then, it's, I've never turned back. Uh, I love the Lord, and I thank Him every day, every single day. I thank Him for my life, my wife, my family, my church family, and my salvation. And I'm never going to turn back. And I urge anybody that does not know the Lord, you need to. I mean, it, it, life's not perfect. And and I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress just like everybody else. And But I, I don't forget it. And I never will. And I think, I think this church and my wife mainly for bringing me back. And... Uh, but 
Thank, thank the Lord you could pray for the least little thing or a big thing. It does not matter when you pray. And not all your prayers are going to be answered. But thank him for everything that goes on in your life. He's in control of it. Don't, don't let on like he's not. I mean, every little thing. Thank him. I do every single day. And don't know what else to say, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for my wife and my church family. And bless PJ as he gives the message today. And as one person gets it in their heart for salvation during this message, it will be worth it. Be with all of us as we go on with our work week. And I just thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for my life. Because my life is not over. And it's just begun. Amen. I was talking to my brother. <laughs> and I was telling him, I was like, man, God is moving. He was like, yeah. It's awesome. So I even feel it when we sing, and he's like, yeah. And uh, it, I don't know, I, we just kept talking. And, but then I realized as I was walking up here late, uh, it's like, and you know what we were doing? We were praising God. This in those few minutes, we were just praising God for some, this little, little small, little small things. And it's absolutely awesome. We got something to praise him for. And uh, I know it took uh, a lot of guts to be able to share what he did uh, Ernie, you did a fantastic job of the intro. We all show him some love this morning. Whenever we can be honest and real, that's something to praise God for. And that's one thing that we want to do is to be able to have opportunities for you to be able to connect with others and with God. Because that's really what it's all about. And we want to give you that opportunity right now. So we're happy to stand to your feet. We're going to take a minute and uh, shake somebody's hand, tell somebody good morning. Maybe you came in here on two wheels. Uh, Maybe you want to tell Ernie what a fantastic job he did, but uh, just take this as a moment, just to just shake somebody's hand, tell them hello. Hey, man, good to see you, man. Everybody watching online, we want to say good morning. We got Wendy and Chris back here on the camera and uh, on our Facebook Live and stuff. Uh, just want to say good morning. I hope y'all having a great day. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, we just want to take a minute, say hello, uh, shake somebody's hand. Maybe somebody we've not seen in a while. Uh, maybe somebody you don't know. So thank you for participating with us. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you guys for participating with us. We just want to take a minute, just say good morning. Uh, it's unbelievable just what, uh, just a few minutes, just maybe shaking somebody's hand or giving them a hug or um, just say good morning. Uh, it just does something to you because, uh, man, we need, uh, I say we need each other, but we need uh, relationships. We need a relationship with God. We need a relationship with people. Because uh, I kind of want to start out this morning by asking you a question, uh, and I kind of want to see a, a, a show of hands, and it's not saying that you're in something right now, but how many of you would you say that there are times when life is tough? Would you show of hands? How many of you say life, time, uh, it's tough? Okay, we are. And sometimes it can come really, really fast, and uh, I can't, sometimes I can't remember what I've shared from the stage or not, uh, but this one time, uh, me and... Uh, 
our brother was helping our dad. I should say dad was helping us or we were helping dad. But we wanted a clubhouse. Wanted one for years that we could have a, a secret clubhouse just for boys. No girls allowed. Uh, and uh, so he was helping us. And we, were, we had the floor built and we were framing this up. And dad was he- letting me and my brother do most of the work. And I remember having a nail and my dad holding this board. And I missed the nail. You know what I hit? My dad's thumb. And uh, sometimes life hits like a, a, <laughs> hits us that fast as something bad, and it hits us, bam, just out of nowhere. And Dad, he kept his composure, but I remember I can still picture that face. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to get hurt. And uh, he, all he said was, ow, that hurt. <laughs> and he never fussed at me, never one time. But you know what he said? Let's not do that again. <laughs> now, granted, he kept his thumb <laughs> clear out of the path from then on. Uh, but let's, let's not do that again. How many times have you been through something in your life, whether it be in your marriage or with your kids, and you're like, uh, let's not do that again. <laughs> that, that was, let's not do that again. That was a mistake. Uh, sometimes we experiment this with food. Um, I've come to, I love cooking. And sometimes I fix stuff. And you can just tell by the expression on my kid's face. It's like. And I'm like, guys, you don't have to eat that. And they're like, thank goodness. <laughs> um, let's, and they'll say, daddy, let's, let's not fix this again. Uh, okay. Uh, they've also said that about meatloaf, but I like it and we eat it anyway. So sometimes we go through life and we have these things with us that we come through. And we're like, I don't really want to do that again. Let, let's not go through that again. But let's not experience that again. We have the same thing in school, whether it be in high school, elementary school. You be having some kind of an issue, whether it be on the football team or, or with the teacher. You be like, ah, let's let's not do that again. Sometimes we have this in our marriage, and we have to go through some sort of issue or uh, through some sort of problem. When we get to the end of that, you're like, ah, let's not let's not do that again. So what about when you're right in the middle of it? See, I'm I'm guilty of being in my Bible praising God. And then something will happen. I'll be like, God, what, what gives? Like, I read my Bible. Like, I literally spent time this morning reading your word and praying, and then I come to work to this? And sometimes that's the way that we look at our life with God. We look at it like, almost like a performance based. Like, the more that we get in the scriptures and the more that we do for God, the easier life's going to be. But that's not the way that life is. And I have no idea why that Rocky video... The audio and the lips, I finally, I'd had to quit watching because I can't stand that when you're, you know, the Chinese movies when the lips are going and the words are later. But the general theme of what Rocky is trying to say is that, son, life is going to beat you down. Now, you have a choice to make. You can let it beat you down or you can keep getting up. You can keep moving forward. And so how is it that we keep moving forward? Well, I'm glad you asked that because when we start looking at the Bible, we see so many examples of moving forward and we have different ideas about what it's going to look like. But we're going to answer those questions for you today in Acts chapter 3 if you have your Bibles. That's where we're going to be. And this is an absolutely amazing story about looking to the right perspective because sometimes when you're in the middle of the storm, when you're in the middle of raising your teenagers, when you're in the middle of dealing with addiction, or when you're in the middle of dealing with a health issue, when you're in the middle of having, you know, whatever issue that it may be, whether it be financial or spiritual or relationships, when we're in the middle of that, it doesn't feel so good. And sometimes we're starting to question, like, God, where are you at? I've been going to church. I've been reading my Bible. Where, where are you at, God? What, what is going on here? What did I do to deserve, to deserve this? Well, it's because we have different expectations. But see, when we can praise God and recognize his hand all around us, it sets an attitude of praise within our whole demeanor to every aspect of our life. So before I realized that me and my brother were back there, we were taking turns, we were just praising God. And then I realized, like, wait a minute, uh, that transition video is almost over. I got to go. And then I went through it, I was like, wait a minute, i got to turn my mic on. So I just kept blah, blah, blah. But it becomes a part of our lives. Well, in Acts chapter 3, we're introduced to an individual here who needed something, but got something else. In Acts chapter 3, it says this. Now, when Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, 
And they went to the temple because they didn't have a church in what we did. They still practiced this, and daily they would go to the temple and pray. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go in the temple, he began asking to receive alms. So he's begging. He was a professional beggar. And this is what he did. And every day for 40 years, this guy, we don't know his exact age. We just know he was somewhere above 40 years. So we don't know. So I'm 43, so we know he's somewhere around my age, maybe a little bit more, somewhere in his 40s. For 40 years, people had to pick him up and take him to the temple where there the only thing he could do was beg for money. And this is what he did for his livelihood. His livelihood. Now, could you imagine the burden that would be on somebody else? Hey, you want to go fishing? Wanna? No, I can't. I've got to take so-and-so up to the temple. Oh, man. So he's there begging. He sees Peter and John, and he asked for something. He asked. Verse 4, But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. He began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. <laughs> I love this. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up. Immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Verse 8, with a leap he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. He started praising God. I love this. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. I love this. Because he's asking for money, but he got something completely different. And this is what we are often looking like in life. We are looking for something specific. Ernie was looking for something specific and didn't really know what he was looking for and sometimes we're trying to look at life we're trying to look at god to get something specific and we'll start reading our bible we'll start praying hoping to get something specific from god but he turns to peter and john he says i don't have it they said, i don't have silver or gold i don't have any money but i do have something in the name of jesus christ of nazareth Rise up. And I love that he leaped up. And he immediately started praising God. Did you catch that? He started praising God immediately. Immediately. But he didn't get what he asked for. Now let that sink in just for a minute. He's asking for money. And he didn't get it. But he's praising God. And why is it that he's praising God? He didn't get what he wanted. But church, he got so much more now this is all come together it's making perfect sense why ernie was doing this today did you hear what ernie was praying for ernie was praying for a wife praying for a companion he was seeking that he got so much more because along with that he got a relationship with the lord and other people did you hear that so powerful what god does he can exceed your prayer he can exceed your request what are we supposed to do along the way <laughs> what this man did praise the lord nobody was there like what are you praising god for you're still broke <laughs> nobody was there telling him hey you're not crippled anymore now you get to go to work nobody said that but instead what they're doing they're all praising the lord it started off with the one who was begging he got healed, and he immediately started praising the Lord. Let me just ask you this right now. Do you have something in your life right now, whether it's in your favor or not, that you can praise the Lord for? Man, praise the Lord. But what do we do? Do we walk around with that praise upon our hearts, or do we walk around with other attitudes? Or are we thankful for so many things, or do we walk around defeated? Well, we need to walk around with praise upon their hearts because at verse 10 it said, and they were taking note, all the people, oh, I'm sorry, verse 9, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, so they saw him in their actions. And I can just imagine, like, wait a minute, isn't this, I wish we knew his name. Isn't this so-and-so? Isn't that the guy who was begging money? He's, he's walking. And not only that, he's praising God. Immediately. But they're taking note. 
And church people are taking note of you. They're taking note of you. They're taking note of your family, how you, how you work. They're taking note of you. Uh, they're watching you. They're looking to see how you are going to praise the Lord. A lot of times, they're going to see how you handle a situation. That shared that a few weeks ago. That a neighbor stopped to watch him deal with an issue just to see how he would react. Whether he'd get angry or act calmly. People are watching us. They're watching how you give praise to the Lord. Just they're listening to how you talk about your spouse. They're listening to how you talk about your children. They're listening about how you talk about work. They're listening. They're watching. So we are setting examples for people where we even realize it or not. We're, they're looking to us. And many times we're like, don't look at me. <laughs> you don't want to look at me. This is when life gets real. When we can honestly be vulnerable enough to share with others who we really are. Who we really are. I used to get all tore up when somebody would surprise visit our house because it would, well, there's six of us there. And if you can imagine about how we live there, it is not a showcase. Now, if we know you're coming, we're going to sweep, we're going to clean, and we're going to make sure everything is picked up. But if you stop by, I guarantee you, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the upstairs laundry room door is shut. But there's going to be dishes in the sink with four girls there's going to be stuff around with six people in the house there's going to be shoes by the door not picked up i used to be really really concerned about that but i guarantee you that your house is going to look similar to mine and if you had smaller kids uh, forget cleaning because there's going to be naked barbie dolls and legos everywhere but church could you imagine if we could just be real with one another and be vulnerable to be able to share our lives together enough. Not to be embarrassed about. Because we live at our house. And I'm sure that you live at your house. What about what's going on in your family? The issues that you've got going on. Could you imagine being real about those things? I mean, nobody posts on Facebook, well, me and my husband just got into it. They don't, they don't do that. What they're sharing is a picture of them going on vacation. But what you don't see is the fight they had five minutes before. I'm talking about being real with one another. Because people are watching. And they're seeing, just being real. See, I think this is what Christianity is all about, about us being real to show people that it doesn't matter how messed up your life is, God loves you. You don't have to come in here to be perfect because we are not perfect people. Life is beating us all down. And we're all at different walks of life. What we should do is encourage each other to get back up and keep moving forward. They looked and they saw what had happened. Here was the man. He had leaped up and immediately started praising God. And they started looking in awe and amazement. But it doesn't stop there. Peter begins to preach to them. He said, guys, don't look at me and John. It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who done this. Well, you would think that everybody would like that. Like, oh, Jesus, this is great. Let's get some more of this stuff. Tell us more. Tell us more. Well, flip over to Acts chapter 4. So they were talking to the people. So as they were speaking to the people about this, they were telling that Jesus was the way. Jesus is the one who done this. It says the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them. <laughs> and in verse 2, being greatly disturbed, they were upset at what they had seen and heard. Greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the message believed and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Here they were doing everything right. And sometimes in your life it's going to appear, it's going to feel like you're going to tell yourself you're doing everything right. Hey, we went to church today. But yet, something will happen. Here they were doing everything right. Here the, this man was healed, doing everything right, teaching people, pointing people to Jesus. He's the reason why this man's healed, doing everything right. But instead, what happened? This is a group of people that came. They took them and put them in jail. Now I think this is something that we can relate to. Because here we are in life, we're trying to do our very best, and then, bam, something happens. Bam, something will happen. Just like Dad... And that me hitting uh, his thumb with a hammer. And sometimes it hits you that fast, that hard, out of completely nowhere. 
Man, and they landed him in jail. And you can relate to this. Jesus, I'm praying. Jesus, I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm obeying the speed limit, Lord. I'm being kind at work. God, I'm being a lot here. And then, bam, you find yourself in jail. Well, you may not be in jail, but you find yourself in a situation. You find yourself in an argument. You find yourself in a predicament. And they did too. They did too. They found themselves in prison. And they spent overnight there. They kept them there until the next day, and then they came and they were trying to figure out what they're going to do with Peter and John. What, what is it that they're going to do? Verse 7, they bring them out and they stand them in front. And I love this. When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, by what power or in what name have you done this? So they're asking Peter and John, how have you done this? This man had been crippled, lame for 40 years. How have you done this? How have you done this? Peter and John did not defend their case. They did not defend that they were wrongfully put in prison. They didn't tell these religious people how wrong they were. Instead, they'd done something completely different. Look down at verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, as to how this man be made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, he threw that little jab in there, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name this man stands here before you in good health. Verse 11, he's talking about Jesus. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which came the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there was no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. They had the perfect opportunity, the perfect platform to defend their case. You guys are wrong. We shouldn't be in prison. You all need Jesus. But instead, they use this as an opportunity to point the very people who crucified Jesus, who wrongfully put Peter and John in prison, they use that as an opportunity to point everybody to Jesus. We are going to be presented with opportunities many times that we can make a choice to keep your mouth shut or to vent negatively or that we can point people to Jesus. <laughs> Me and my brother used to fight all the time and I remember mom would, she would say, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, y'all know the rest of this. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, then uh, hey, you don't even need me to help you with that. We, we know this. But yet, I get so sick and tired of social media, and maybe you do too, because it's so much ranting and raving on there. In an interview with Mark Zuckerberg, he said that he created as an opportunity to connect people together, not drive them apart. A platform to connect people together. What are we doing with the opportunities that we have? Are we praising God? Are we, are we still trying to use this to connect people together? To point them to Jesus? Or are we using it as a platform to throw somebody under the bus? Do we give God praise in all aspects? Man, here they are. They're in prison. They're on trial here. And they're using this as a platform to give all the glory, all the praise, all the attention to Jesus. That's it. What do we do when we find ourselves in a mess or when we find ourselves back into a corner, going through a struggle? Church, we need to find whatever it is that we can praise God for, that we can turn the attention to Jesus. When we turn the attention to Jesus, what can people say? What can people say? I shared last week about at the gas pump when I was getting gas and I was talking about this, this guy, he was fussing and complaining and I'm start, not sure what... All he said, but he was just grumbling about the gas prices. He was just doing all this. And then I turned the attention as I praying for our leaders. Praying for our leaders. And he grumbled a little bit more, but he couldn't say nothing else. I have never had somebody to tell me something negative when I tell them that I'm going to pray for them. I never have. 
Somebody will tell me about a situation or I hear about something. I'll say, hey, I'm praying for you. I've never had somebody go, oh, Lord, don't do that. Don't, don't pray for me. Don't pray for me. They're usually just the opposite. Huh, well, well, thank you. That's a great way to defend a situation. You have somebody who's very hated and very angry. You say, you know what? The Lord loves you. I'm going to pray for you. It's almost like they don't know what to do. Like They want to fight, but they're looking at Jesus, and they can't. Like when you're showing somebody this type of love, giving God a platform, giving him praise, what can people say? So here's what they did. Here's what they did to Peter and John. This is verse 18, so we're going to skip down. It says, and when they had some of them back, uh, they commanded them. Here's what they said. Uh, Do not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, how do you think is it going to go over with Peter? Not well. So Peter and John answered to them and said, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. I love this, for we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. Church, we should not be able to stop praising God for the things that he's done in our life. The thing that Ernie repeated over and over this morning was praise God for salvation. Man, if nothing else, praise God for salvation. Man. So, so when they had threatened them, so they threatened them more. They threatened them further. Don't speak no more of Jesus. Don't, don't speak no more of Jesus. They let them go, finding no basis on which to punish them on the account of the people because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. They believed that this group of people that were praising God, this group of people that has witnessed this, was somewhere between ten to 15,000 people. It was recorded 5,000 people were saved at this event. 5,000 men. And they believe it's somewhere between ten and 15,000 people. So you've got ten to 15,000 people that are witnessing this and they're glorifying God. So outside of this trial, there's people praising God. And why are they praising God? For the things that they had seen and heard. This lame man was walking. He was healed. And not only was he walking, he was praising God. The first thing he did was praise God. Now, if you had been lame for 40 years, you've never been able to walk, what would you do first thing? What would you do first thing? Would you run? <laughs> would you skip? Would you run to your mom and go, look, mom, what would you do? Church, he praised God, and everybody else was just in awe and joining in. And they kept praising God for the things which they'd seen and they heard. Why? Because people are pointing others to Jesus. Everyone was praising God. Well, they had to let them go. Well, they threatened them, and it didn't work. All right, so now put yourselves in Peter and John's shoes. They're out of prison. They had to spend overnight there. They're out of prison. What would you do? You just spent the night in prison. What are you going to do? Well, let's look at it in today's culture. Well, you'd look on Facebook, and what would you see? You would, they would probably be throwing all these religious people under the bus. All the negative. They would go back to their group of people. You know who the group of people you run to in your life? And then they would start ranting, start unloading. Can you believe them people? They threw us in prison. They don't know a thing. I want you to look at what they did. This is verse 23. So when it hit the fan in their lives, when they, when they found all this out, they gave all the glory to Jesus. But look at what they did next in verse 23. It says, when they had been released, they went to their own companions because this is what we do. Whenever we go through something, right, we go back to our, our group of people. We connect with our group of people. And we say, well, let me tell you what happened to me. This is what happened. They went back to their own companions and reported. They did the same thing. They reported about to the chief priests and the elders, what they had said to them. Here's where we need to pay attention, verse 24. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And you can read and look at the prayer that they prayed. And man, what a prayer that they prayed. We saw no ranting, no raving, no throwing under the bus, no negativity. Instead, what we see is, we see their boldness. They're just using it as an opportunity, a platform to give God praise. Look at verse 29. It says, and now, Lord, and now, Lord, take note of their threats. This is still part of their prayer. They've been released from prison. They go back. They give a report to everybody what had happened. And now they're praying. 
It says, Now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. They're praying for more boldness. While you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place to the name of your holy servant, Jesus. <laughs> and when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. The church, you're talking about powerful. They use this as an opportunity, a platform to give God praise for the things that they were experienced. And to pray for even more boldness to go through experiences like it. More boldness. So they can tell more people about Jesus, giving him all the glory and all the praise. And they were all praying this together. It was so powerful, so moving, that the presence of the Holy Spirit was there. And the building began to shake. Could you imagine that? They were all together. They were all praying this. They were all praising God through their prayer, asking for boldness. And the place was shaken. It was such a powerful prayer, such a powerful moment of praise that the facility shook. You're talking about powerful. Powerful. This is all of the Spirit because it moved. Church, we should be praising God. Do you have things in your life that are coming against you? Absolutely. Is it tough? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are things hard in your life? Absolutely. Will they get easier so long? Absolutely. Will they get tougher too? Absolutely. So we've got to have the right perspective to give God praise through the storm, through our experiences, watching Him move and work, praising Him even when it's not easy. It's easy to praise God when you're on the mountaintop. Money is thrown everywhere. All the kids are getting along. Nobody's fighting. You and your spouse are just... Hitting it off, it's great at home and everything. It's easy to praise God like, oh man, you're so good. But you let one thing happen. You let your tire go flat. Oh God, woe is me. Woe is me. And we'll start complaining. Forgetting immediately about all the other millions of things that were going good. A pastor I follow, him and his family, his wife, they had one daughter, they were going on vacation. They were going to Hawaii. Trip of a lifetime. They were going to spend an entire week at this resort. But it was just complaint after complaint after the complaint. First something happened at the airport. And he's like, oh man, can you believe this? They had to take their shoes off and it was patting them down. And he's like, man, we're going to be late for a flight. They finally get on the, the plane and they finally get to their hotel or their resort that they're staying at and they get there. And it's like, oh man, we're finally here after all these hours. And they go in and then there's a spider. You remember we're in Hawaii and there's a spider just kept complaining. And his wife said, listen, you've complained ever since we started on this trip. We're in freaking Hawaii. Get over it. And I wonder how many times we need to do that in our lives. We have all this other stuff that's going for us. And one little thing, and we're like, God, you don't love me. God, where, where, where are you at? Church, he's here. He's moving. He's working. They had every right, every reason to complain. God, what are you talk? God, we've been in prison. We healed a man in Jesus' name and it landed us in prison. Where are you at, God? Where are you at? Where are you at now? Then they finally get out. They don't complain to God. They don't say, okay, God, no more of this. No, they said, let's pray for more boldness. And they were all together. Yeah, let's be more bold. Let's be more bold. We all started praising God. And this one was praising God. And it was this infectious. They were all praising God. All in one accord. Oh man. And the Holy Spirit moved so powerful that the building shook. I want God to move so much in your life that it rocks you to your core. That you can feel the powerful presence of God so much that you can even feel it. Could you imagine if we all would do this? Recognizing and giving God praise even when it's hard. Even when you have things going against you. I'm talking about some prayerful praise. I mean praise that you just mean it. I mean many times when we come to God in prayer, it's a laundry list. And I'm guilty of this too. God, I need you to move in this. God, I need you to touch my kid's life here. 
God, I need this. God touched this person's life. And it's almost like a laundry list. God, I need you to do this and do this and do this. Church, could you imagine if we came to God just praising? God, I praise you for this. God, I praise you for my wife. God, I praise you for my kids. God, I praise you for my job. God, I praise you for what you're doing. God, I praise you here. Church, could you imagine what would happen if we would, if we would prayerfully praise God for all the things that he's done? Church, them, it rocked, it rocked the foundation. Could you imagine what would happen if we would do that? Church, how would your life be different? Instead of, instead of ranting and raving, instead of seeing all the negativity, man, you just praise God. Just praise God. We're not saying things are perfect, not saying things are going to be perfect, but just praising God. Praising God through your trial. Praising God through your storm. Just praise God. If we allow our circumstances to rob us of praise, then we are missing a great opportunity to glorify God. We don't praise Him based upon our circumstances. We praise Him regardless of our circumstances. Church, this morning, do you have something to praise God for? We want to give you the opportunity to prayerfully praise God for what He has done in your life. To, to prayerfully praise God for what He's doing. And some of you, you're in the middle of a storm and you can't see it. You can't see it. You don't know how it's going to get worked out. You don't know how He's going to do it. Church, we prayerfully praise God. We go ahead and praise Him for the things he's going to do. God, you're going to move in my marriage. God, you're going to move in this health situation. God, you're going to move in my kid's life. God, you're going to move at my work. We praise God for what he's going to do. This is how we're going to close today and give you an opportunity to praise God. I want to have Brian and him. They're going to close out these lights. I'm going to have you wood just to stand to your feet. And right now is your opportunity to praise the Lord. The Lord's moving in your life. This altar is open to come. You can come to this altar. You can give God some prayerful praise, whatever that looks like. Right now is your opportunity to praise God. I'm not asking anybody to close their eyes and bow their heads, although you can. It's an opportunity right now for you just to praise God. Here's an opportunity for you just to move. And say, God, I thank you for moving in my life here. God, I praise you for moving in my life here. God, I praise you for what you've done here. Right now is just your opportunity to praise God for what he's doing. I'm going to pray together that I'm going to encourage you to take this time to praise God. Father, we come to you right now thankful for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Father, there's many things in our lives that we can complain about, many things that are negative that happen to us, things that are not pleasant, things that don't feel good. God, we're praising you through the storm. Right now, Father, we turn our prayerful hearts' attention to you as we praise you in our lives. Father, at this moment, we just ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to move and work in this place and in our lives and that you'd receive our praise. Church, as you continue to pray, the Lord is moving in your life. However He's moving in your life, we just want you to have this opportunity right now to praise God. I'm not saying your life is perfect. Just an opportunity to praise the Lord. So right now, that's what we want you to do is to praise the Lord. If there's something going on in your life right now, praise the Lord for it. Something to thank Him for, praise the Lord for it. If there's something heavy on your heart, you need to come to the altar, then I encourage you to come to the altar. It is open right now. This is an opportunity for you Praise the Lord for what He's done in your life. Maybe you find yourself right in the middle of a trial right now. That's fine. What can you praise the Lord for this morning as you go through this? What can you praise the Lord for through this morning as you go through this? We already mentioned earlier, some of you, you can't see it. You can't see it being worked out. Right now, can you take a moment to give God praise for what He's going to do? Already claiming the victory. Already claiming that He 
It's the one who's moving and working. He's not done yet. He's not through with you yet. Praising God. Just praising God. Church, this is where the power is. The power of the Holy Spirit moves so much on that day when Peter and John came back to their friends and they were telling what had happened. They all together, they prayed. Man, and the Holy Spirit moved and the place shook. They were all in an agreement, all praying for boldness, all giving Him praise for what He had done. This morning, you take an opportunity to praise God for your family. I praise God for your spouse. Praise God for your kids. Praise God for your health. So we just want to give you an opportunity to praise the Lord. So some that's come to the altar this morning, if you feel this morning, uh, that need, that desire to come to the altar. And I encourage you just to come. Come to the altar and give God that praise. Come to the altar to give God your heart. Whatever it is you're burdened for. Whatever it is that your, your heart is telling you. Whatever it is the Spirit is moving in your life. That's how we want you to respond. That's what we want you to do. May you move and work in a great and mighty way. As you continue to pray, and give God praise. There may be some of you here today that maybe you've got something going on right now and you, you're ready to take that time as an opportunity to praise the Lord. But maybe you need somebody to pray for you through this storm. Just to see if I can have the opportunity to pray for you. If you're here this morning, you've got something going on in your life, I would love to have the opportunity to take that before the Lord. Would you just raise your hand up and say, Hey, Pastor, would you, would you pray for me? Yeah, there's hands going up everywhere. Oh, yeah, we'll pray for you. Nobody's looking around. This is just between me and you and God. We're going to pray for you. Will there be others? Hey, just raise your hand up and pray for me. We got stuff going on, yeah. Yeah, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. Father, we come to you right now thankful <laughs> that we can come before your presence with boldness. Father, we can even ask for boldness just as these followers did. They were all together praising you, Father, for what you have done. And God, and you moved in such a mighty way. God, that's what we're asking for, that you move in such a mighty way in our lives. God, you saw these hands, they represent real issues. You're people that are experiencing many different things. And they need a movement of God. God, they need you to move in their life. So, Father, I pray that you would touch them and lead them. Guide them, Father, through their circumstances. And help them, Father, that as they go through this storm, that they would continue to give you praise. Whether things are in their favor or not. Help us, God, as a church. We know that Satan, he's a liar. He wants to tell us that there's no use praising. He tries to tell us that there is no God and that He doesn't love us. But He is a liar. He tries to tell us that our spouse doesn't love us and they don't care. He is a liar. He tries to tell us that there's no hope for the things that we're praying for. But He is a liar. He tells us there's no future for our families, for our children. But He is a liar. He tries to tell us, God, there's no hope in praying. But He is a liar. This morning, Father, we proclaim the victory we have through Jesus. And today, Father, we prayerfully come to you, giving you praise and glory and honor for all the things that you have done, you are doing, and are going to do. Because, Father, you are not done yet. Lead us, Father, through this walk of life. We know that it's challenging. And that sometimes, Father, we get beat down. Help us, Father, strengthen us that we may get up and keep moving forward. That we keep coming to church. That we would keep reading our Bibles, that we keep praying and talking to you. God, that we'd be like Ernie this morning, that we would just share our real life experiences, share our struggles, whether it be good, Father, or whether it be bad, that we just share our lives with others. Help us, Father, that we just recognize your hand is at work in our lives and that you're not done yet. Father, I think that is key. You're not done yet. You're still working on all of us. We are all a work in progress. And this morning we praise you, Father that you are not done with us yet. Father, we thank you that this world is not our home. We have a future waiting for us. And we are so excited, Father, for what you have in store. Lead us, Father. As we go throughout our work week, as we go to our homes, as we go to do all of our obligations this week, help us, Father, to praise you whether things are in our favor or against us. Help us, Father, to recognize that you are all over our lives and that the power of your Holy Spirit is alive and well, living in us. Help us, Father, to praise you regardless of our circumstances. And that when people look at us, when they see us, may they see Jesus. It's in his most powerful name we pray. 
Amen. Would you take them off? Give God some praise.